Hey everybody, boys, that's with BK Forest. Welcome to the Com Dollar section for June 26th to June 30th, 2017. For Aussie Dollar, Dollar Cat, and Kiwi Dollar. So I think the interesting story in the Com Dollars this week, of course, was the RBNZ rate decision, which did not come off nearly as dovish as everybody thought it would. They kind of gave uh, a very half-hearted um, jaw bonding to the currency. But having said this, though, the commodity run appears to really, I think, have exhausted itself at this point. The primary driver of all the commodity trades, especially the uh, Aussie and the Kiwi, uh, Caddy is, of course, a separate story, but Aussie and the Kiwi has really been the carry trade flow. The lower U.S. yields go, the higher those two go. And if we continue this particular pattern, I mean, yes, um, if we see uh, the 10-year now sink below the 210, perhaps even towards the 2% rate, no doubt you will see Aussie dollar Kiwi dollar make fresh highs in the upcoming week. But if the rates on the U.S. yields have sort of capped themselves out, there's really nothing else driving underneath the, uh, the commodity dollars. Commodity dollars have actually been underperforming most of the uh, anti-dollar anti flows simply because internally their own economies are just not doing that well and there isn't anything to drive them forward. Aussie dollar has been, uh, except for today, Pretty much a big underperformer most of the week. Kiwi dollar has been trading much better, but now they're coming up against some pretty big resistance levels. As far as the, uh, as far as the resistance, as far as let's just be, before we talk about the resistance level, let's just take a look at the fact that there's just nothing else on the calendar. We have the Kiwi trade balance coming up, and I think that's about it. We have the, something on the caddy. Um, I thought we had CAD data. No, we don't even have CAD data. We literally the, the CAD data that we had today was this this week, which was sort of contradictory. We had positive. Um, Retail sales, negative CPI, which offset the CAD data, but nothing really. This is how this is how uh, quiet the calendar is. We literally have no com dollar data at all, except for the trade balance. So now going back to the resistance and support levels, they pretty much stay the same. But we are probing on both edges, very very key levels here. So 7650 is very much a big resist area in the Aussie. It would really require very big collapse in U.S. yields. To, for us to uh, to see that level uh, taken out. Caddy, of course, is a separate story. We'll address that in a minute because it's really being buffeted by all sorts of contradictory uh, uh, tales and is therefore probably the most the most volatile of the calm dollars. And the Kiwi got that big uh, burst of, of uh, potential uh, upside flavor from our BNZ, but it's now coming up against a very key resist 73 level. And again, only if the U.S. yield drops towards a 2% level do you um, have any confidence in any further upside? So I think in some ways you are going to see some exhaustion in the com dollars this week, assuming that the U.S. yields can hold. That is, of course, a big assumption, but I do think there's a reasonable chance they're going to hold. So let's take a look at the uh, let's take a look at the charts here, and you see the Aussie dollar, yes, making a small recovery here, kind of a tepid recovery after four days of, of downside trends, and you still very much on a longer term basis certainly see a big failure of lower highs coming in here. Um, as the uh, as the trade comes in, really Aussie dollar does not even remotely look like a um, a strong buy unless it takes out the 76s to the upside, um, and uh, that's you know that doesn't seem like it's very far. But remember, Aussie has been traveling 20, 30 pips a day. It's just been an incredibly low volatility trade here. So the 76, 7650 is a very big resist area that's been sold continuously over the last couple of weeks, and only does if that clears. Do you have a very clean and clear upside path? At that point, the whole technical formation completely changes. You basically have a series of higher lows, a big breakout, and a very positive construct with a run towards the 7750s um, to the upside. For now, though, I think the uh, the benefit of the doubt has to go to the shorts in some ways, and you kind of short against this this whole resistance area, looking for a further collapse down to the 75. 75 seems to be, I think, uh, the first area of support, and of course, the next one will be the the very big area of the 74, 73s. That would really require um, a pretty massive sell-off. As I said, the commodity prices, the story on the commodity front as far as fundamentals go, just not there for uh, for support in the Aussie as you go forward. Same kind of a story with Kiwi here. Kiwi internal fundamentals, the economy has been doing okay, but not great. It's, it's certainly shown a little bit of uh, resistance and, and um, failure uh, as far as growth goes, both on the... Uh, uh, CPI side and even on the growth side, um, with dairy prices now starting to, to to come back down. But we did have this big positive upside from the RBNZ rate decision, and of course the the uh, decline in the U.S. yields. 
But again, look at this 73 level. That is the key resist level. So it's, I think in some ways, it's actually interesting. As I said, what's driving the, uh, the Kiwi? What's driving the Aussie carry trade flows? Um, and this tr chart is a kind of an inverse of the, of the yield chart, right? If the U.S. yields continue to go down, we do bust through the 73s, and it does look to be quite positive. If you, if you pull back, you definitely have a very decent argument that this is still uh, uh, an uptrend worth uh, trading. But I find the uptrend very much at, at, at a key resist point here. As a matter of fact, let's just go to the weeklies just to, to see how this particular area. You see how on the weeklies, this is a very, very serious resist area. And for that reason, I'm much more doubtful that it's going to bust through unless you have just a collapse in the U.S. yields. Now, that's a, that's a reasonable bet, but I don't think it's a, it's, it's a um, likely bet. And therefore, the likely bet here is we kind of stall out and start to move back down uh, on the Kiwi. Now, caddy is a completely different story. The, the, the interesting story in the caddy here is that you have these two countervailing forces that um, I think would surprise a lot of investors and a lot of traders. So on the, on the one hand side, oil is a collapse, right? Oil, oil drop broke the 43s, broke the 45s. Trading, it could, it could conceivably actually go down to 40 um, next week. And all of that would argue for a much higher dollar cat. It would, it would argue for a much lower uh, Canadian uh, dollar. But, but. What's been really driving the, the trade in the Canadian dollar has been the unexpectedly hawkish commentary from the incoming, from the new, soon-to-be uh, Bank of uh, Canada governor, who has basically said that they're going to try to move off the accommodative standard going forward. Also, the Canadian economy seems to be doing relatively well. Retail sales bounced back significantly, although CPI today was, was, was much colder. But still, the fact that the Canadian economy is, is now essentially in many ways um, independent of the oil prices is really mitigated this whole collapse in the oil prices for the Canadian dollar. Had that having been said, I still don't think it's um, it's a gone it's a risk completely gone. And I do think that if oil gets pressured just even on on, on sort of momentum flows down to the 40 level, you will see dollar cad go back up towards the 34 level. But having said this though, let's go on the daily chart here. You can see that the 134 is a big resist area now. This was a big collapse a couple of weeks ago. It sent it sent a very strong sell signal on dollar cad. We've just been basically consolidating, and the sense that sell signal has not been reversed. So the idea here is you can still sell against the sell signal with a 34 uh, stop or a stop above 34, with a potentially a move down to the um, 32s, maybe 3150s, if you um, if you get any kind of a rally in oil. So in some ways, one of the more interesting cross trades here is still the relative strength of the loonie. I think there's. One of the more interesting trades, I think, could be actually the Kiwi CAD trade. If you believe that we have an exhaustion in um, in uh, the Kiwi, and we potentially have maybe a bounce back in oil, that's the uh, that's the interesting cross trade. We'll take a look at that in the process. But for now, uh, the commodity sector, to me, is at the top of its range for the for the Aussie and the Kiwi, and with the with the caddy, of course, uh, a wild card, depending on um, depending on how oil prices go in the next week or so. Again, not much data set, so we're really going to be trading of external factors, U.S. yields, oil prices, commodity prices. Those are going to be the primary drivers of trade next week. Wish you guys the best of luck, the best trading. Borsch Lossberg, over and out.